Whether this is your first iPhone, you're switching from Android, or maybe you just upgraded, we're gonna go through everything you need to know to get you on the right track with your new Apple device. In front of me, I've got a fresh iPhone 17. I've just logged into it, but I haven't set it up yet. And over here is my personal 17 Pro that I'm using all the time. But this one is not ready to go. I haven't really done anything. So let's walk through it. I won't waste your time going through the whole new phone setup process. You probably already did that. You've done things like capture your face ID. But I recommend that when it asks you to set a pin, you use six digits instead of the minimum four, because if somebody sees you do it over your shoulder, it's pretty easy for them to get into your phone. And one piece of advice that I can't give often enough, if you don't want to be the person struggling at the Genius Bar at the Apple Store, trying to get back into your phone because you can't access your photos and you're panicking, you need to remember your Apple ID, which is an email and a password. And those are just as important as your logins to your bank. Like you need to put those somewhere that you will not lose them and they are safe because without them, you could get locked out of your phone. So you really have to pay attention to that. And another quick tip, if you're transferring from an older phone to a newer phone, the best way to do it, I think, is iCloud if you set that up. We'll talk about that later. But if you don't have iCloud, then the way to do it is just do the wireless transfer, put them near each other and let them sit for a few hours. It'll work, you just have to be patient. Now for the fun stuff, let's set up our lock screen. All you need to do is tap and hold while your phone is unlocked. Down at the bottom, you can either customize the current screen or swipe to the side and add a new one. It's gonna suggest a bunch of ideas for you. I can't tell you which image to choose, but I always use my wife, Anya, because she's the most beautiful thing I wanna look at every single day. One new feature I love is that the font of the clock is now completely dynamic. So I like to have it slightly behind the person's head, which happens automatically. And there's also a great new feature called spatial photos, which automatically turns any photo, including this film photo, like this is a few years old, taken on film, and now it becomes fully 3D. You can see that, right? Once you're happy with it, you can tap add, and I usually set as wallpaper and screen. Now we'll get inside the phone and I just wanna make sure you know that I am resetting this, all the settings. So I'm starting from the same point you are, I've gotta set it all up from scratch. So we're gonna open the settings app. This is a very complicated app. There are so many different things in here. Searching is the quickest way to navigate it. So I'm gonna search for find my, cause we wanna make sure this is turned on. Find my phone is the best way to recover your phone if it is lost or stolen. Like this has saved me and many other people. You will probably regret it if you don't have this on. And I'd also recommend turning on send last location, which will automatically send the location of the phone if the battery is running low. So that could also help you find it if it's not able to be actively tracked anymore. So already just with that, you've set the most important security settings. As I look around here, none of this is configured with my apps right now. If you wanna know more about those details, I have a dedicated video. So stick around till the end of this one. And I'll give you a direct link so you can keep going, learning more. But for now, we're gonna go through the starter pack. Uh, important place to start is the control panel. To get there, you're swiping from the top right. The top left will get you to notifications, which I don't have any right now. Top right, this is the control panel. A lot of things that we wanna quickly be able to access. So just to introduce you to it, up here are all of our network settings. You can tap and hold this one to expand it if you want to get to more details like Bluetooth, which right now are connected to my AirPods. Same thing with the music player. You can tap and hold to expand it. I think it's good to experiment with tapping and holding all of these. So some common ones I use on the brightness setting, which obviously makes your phone brighter or darker. You can also quickly access dark mode. It switches the background of all your apps from light to dark, pretty straightforward, but I do like to change it sometimes. Dark mode is nice in the evening. These two, Night Shift and True Tone, I highly recommend making sure both of them are off if you care about your photography. Both of them will add a strong yellow tint to your whole screen. This could help in the evening when you're trying to go to sleep and you're looking at your phone. The yellow is less aggressive than the regular blue light, but I think if you're trying to go to bed, you should put your phone down instead of turning it yellow. It will make you misjudge the way that your photos look, so photographers beware. I'm gonna put one of my AirPods in to show you this next thing. Once you've got your AirPods in, pressing and holding on the volume will give you access to all of the different listening modes. Great to experiment with those, see what you like. I spend most of my time switching between transparency and noise canceling. Which by the way, you can also press and hold the stem of your AirPod to turn that on and off. I usually have my orientation locked so that when I turn it sideways, it doesn't rotate unless you're watching a video, pretty much. I also usually have my notifications silenced. Make sure you know if this is on or off, but it just makes your phone buzz instead of ring when someone calls. There's a million things you can do in the control panel. We don't have time to go through all of them, but there's a few that I like to add that I kind of consider essential. If you press and hold, you'll be able to add a control. 
From here, I would definitely add alarms. I set alarm clocks all the time. I would also add low power mode. When you're traveling or your battery's running low, it'll just use less battery. Also great is recognize music. This just triggers Shazam, listens to whatever the audio is around you, tells you what song is playing. Also screen recording, which I'm using right now. That's that little red dot to record my screen. And there's one kind of hidden item in the control panel that I think a lot of people could use. If you search for vehicle, it's called vehicle motion cues. Now let's try turning that on. What it does is adds dots all around your screen, whatever app you're in, and we're not moving now, so not much is happening, but when you're driving in the car, these dots around the screen start to move all over, tracking the movement of the vehicle. So when you're a passenger looking at your phone, you're not getting motion sick, it totally works, it's amazing. Also with the focus modes, I think of these as kind of advanced user options. Like if you don't have a good idea how to use them, maybe don't, because you might end up missing calls. The only one I really use is do not disturb if I'm recording a video like this so nobody calls. But other than that, it might just be a way to miss calls. Again, kind of an advanced feature. If you want to be really sure that you're never going to get locked out of your phone, you can also add a recovery contact. It's going to suggest some people from my family that are sharing the same Apple ID. So I'm going to add my wife, Anya and say she is my recovery contact. So now after I put in my password, she is able to help me get back into my Apple ID if I'm ever locked out. Now I'm sure you already know there's a million different apps in here for every possible use case, but there's some things that kind of work better when you have a dedicated accessory. I mean, like I like carrying a dedicated camera around. One of those things is note taking. This is the new Soundcore work from Anchor, sponsor of this video, and it makes a great iPhone accessory for work productivity. The way it works is that it's paired with your phone and anytime you want to start taking notes, you just press this button. In the background, this tiny little microphone captures your conversations and with its privacy protection, keeps your data safe. If I want to drop a marker, every time that I double tap, it's going to leave a mark that I can come back to in the recording. Once you have your recording, you can put AI to work. The basics are that it'll create a transcript recognizing different speakers in the room, but it can also do intelligent summaries. So for example, this week I was at a conference and while the speakers were giving their presentations, I could take all my notes without taking any notes. So this panel on creator brand collaboration I can just go into the intelligent summary here. Another way I used this recently was coming up with a YouTube script. I kind of just improvised for a while, just talking, and that gave me a summary of all the concepts. And then our production team had a meeting about an upcoming project. So check out the Soundcore work. The six month subscription can give you longer transcriptions and better AI tools. The link is down below. I think it's also worth double checking that you have the health app configured the way that you want for everything that you like to do. It's gonna have you enter your personal details. You have to be honest about your height and weight. And now, oh, actually, this is the first time I've got a request for notifications. I recommend turning off almost all of the notifications on your phone. That'll be one of the next things we do. But whenever you get one of these prompts, think hard. Like, do I wanna get notifications from this particular app? Anyway, I don't need it from health. Well, I tried again. Would like to send you notifications. No, thank you. Now up at the top, this is what we're looking for. Health checklist. I'm going to click review. Here's everything we want to make sure is set up. So emergency SOS. This is turned on. And basically when you squeeze the buttons on the outside, like this, it'll bring up this menu where you can either turn off your phone, bring up your medical ID or an emergency call really quickly. It's very good to know that that is available. Your medical idea so that if you're injured, first responders will have a bunch of details about your medical history. Crash detection, this is good to have on. If you get in a car accident, it'll recognize it. Call emergency services. And there's even more. You can kind of go through these details. I just want to draw attention to it because if you never set these up, you're not getting all the benefits of your iPhone. So I mentioned notifications. Let's go into settings and scroll down. They're right here. Basically, I'm just very particular about what can notify me. Like some of them you can see here. FaceTime, yeah, that can. Find my, also important. Game Center, I mean, no, not really. Phone, yeah, absolutely. Phone calls, messages, yes. But you do not need things like social media or the Photos app or the music app. Like most things have no good reason to notify you and you'll just be saner in life if they are turned off. So again, for me, I only turn on essential communication for being able to break through and notify me of stuff. Other than that, I'll find it when I find it. And while we're in the settings app, let's do some more fun ones. Check out action button. This is the button on the side of your iPhone. As long as you've got a relatively recent one, you've probably got that, which replaced the switch a couple of years ago. By default, it will change the phone to silent mode. Maybe you want to use that way, but I've got some other recommendations. I think some useful ones are setting it to the flashlight. So when you press and hold, your flashlight comes on. Very useful. You might also consider directly recognizing music by launching Shazam. Sometimes when you're traveling, I just change it to translate temporarily, and then it like listens to what's happening, launches the app, and instantly can start translating a conversation back and forth. Or I'll tell you how I actually use it. I set this to shortcut, choose a shortcut, 
And all I do is create open app and I haven't installed any apps yet, but let's just look at my other phone. I have this trigger Blackmagic camera, which is a more professional camera app. That's how I use it. The other physical button that iPhone's got pretty recently is camera control, which is right here. And we can access these through the camera settings and at the very top camera control. My recommendation is you just use this to launch the camera app and then turn off camera adjustments. This may or may not be on depending how you set up your phone, but a lot of the time it messes people up is you're just touching this edge softly. It'll be changing settings. I just skip all that, keep it off. Camera settings I've gone over in many videos, so I'm just gonna do my best hits. Photographic style, my favorite is amber. It warms things up a bit and customize it to be tone at negative 50 and color at plus 25 approximately. This is kind of a finicky little control, but somewhere in that range. Basically lowering tone makes it look less HDR and like a phone photo and then turning up saturation just compensates for a bit of the flat look that an iPhone can have. Then we're gonna go into record video and everybody I think should turn off HDR videos. It's a more advanced format. If you love HDR, keep it on, I guess, but most content creators will just get tripped up with that format. So just turn it off, forget that it even exists and you'll have a much better time creating content. Back in the camera menu here, I'd also recommend turning on the grid and the level and turning off view outside the frame. So now when you launch your camera, it'll look like this. You'll have these light white grid lines helping you keep lines straight. And then you've also got this yellow and white indicator so that you know when the camera is level. One setting that's outside of camera, but related. So let's just search for the photos app. There it is. Turn off view full HDR. This is again, this is a personal preference. I mean, iPhones support HDR by default. I just find it kind of annoying. So I turn it off. One thing that's totally new in iOS 26, let's search for phone settings and scroll down. And let me warn you, this is if you're feeling brave because it's a new feature. When people call you, you can ask them to be screened by AI, basically. I mean, a little robot voice will ask like, why are you calling? And it'll deliver a message to you explaining the call. Now, I worry about this filtering out important calls. Like if you get a lot of calls that you just need to answer, you know, probably don't turn this on. But if you have a huge problem with spam calls, like this could save you a lot of stress. So check it out. It's worth at least experimenting with. And the other new one that looks like it's on by default is hold assist detection. So when you're on hold, it'll say like, oh, do you enjoy being on hold? No? Okay, well, the iPhone will now hold that line for you and detect when a real person has come on and tell you like, oh, they're ready for you now. And you can pick your phone back up and start talking. One part of the settings app that everybody should take a look at at some point is sound and haptics. So I usually run in silent mode. I think most people should keep change with buttons turned off basically. So when your phone rings, you could start pressing the volume up and down to adjust the ringer volume. But I find a lot of people accidentally mute the ringer without realizing it. And it can take like weeks of missing calls. So just keep that one off. Then I would look for keyboard feedback and turn off sound and turn on haptic. That way, when you're typing, you can feel the keyboard instead of playing it out loud, driving all the people around you crazy. Change I don't really like in iOS 26 is the way that screen capture works. So if we start searching for it, there are a few preferences. First, let's see how the feature works by default. Let's say I'm browsing for some cinematic presets and I find Tyler Stallman's LUTs. I could take a screenshot and then I get this full page view. Whatever I circle on screen, Apple Intelligence is then gonna do a search either in Google or Pinterest to give me more information about that. But you don't need to use this. There's a link in the description below to find out about the LUTs. But here's what I don't like about that. If I take a few screenshots in a row, like sometimes I'm taking different screenshots, I don't see the other ones and I actually can't get back to using my app until I've like made some decisions here. Either I click check mark can save to photos or I delete them. Like I need to go through some steps to clear that from my screen. I prefer to keep this turned off. So when I take a screenshot, it just goes to the bottom corner and I can keep using my phone. If I want to interact full screen, I can tap it and I have that option. Now let's finish things off talking about iCloud for a second. And I know a lot of people feel conflicted about this. I don't want to be pitching it to you if you feel like it's too expensive because it can be a bit of an Apple tax to get like all of the best features out of your iPhone. You have to pay monthly. Let's take a look at it. Like this is our storage. We're using 6.2 out of eight terabytes. That's all photo backup basically. So if I lose this phone, I still have 
all of my photos backed up. And so does my wife and all of my apps and my passwords are saved and my messages. Like I can just jump into a new phone with basically no effort because it's backed up in iCloud. We pay for the Apple One account to do this. So we have the extra data. We can sync it across devices and it also comes with Apple Music and all that stuff. So it does make the iPhone work better. Like this is what Apple does best. They package things to make a great user experience. I wish you got more free storage so that you didn't have to pay just to get the backup. But if you're considering it, it's so worth it and it is the best way to restore a new iPhone using iCloud. That's how we started this whole video. So hopefully you guys have found this helpful. Now, as promised on screen, you should see a link to the video about all the apps that I have on my iPhone. If you tap through, you'll learn about how I configure absolutely everything. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in that video.